Resuming the season, the 2020 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the best in the business in high-level competition. Picking up pretty much right where they left off, just trying to beat each other as much as they possibly can. And we have had some a lot, a lot of uh, action along those lines while we were gone, while we stepped away for an hour. So much action up and down that leaderboard. You can see now Florida's Kyle Monty has hit the 20-pound mark. He is in the lead. Jake Whitaker, who just busted into the top 10 before we left an hour ago, now in second place. We have seen a great morning of fishing. Mark Zona, I, I, I think it's satisfied our desire to get going with live sports and live fishing. Uh, I think we were all ready to go. Happy all of you are joining us here on ESPN2. And the one thing that you could say about this morning, it was flurries of action. And it started really before we went live. It started about the first 15 minutes of competition. And the other thing about it is during our midday break, we thought there was a few typos, how quickly the leaderboard changed. Yeah, it's it's got a completely different complexion right now. And we're going to investigate just what has gone on in this past hour for you. We're going to show you a lot of footage from that past over. hour. We're always, it's always down rolling. Down here on Lake Bassmaster Live, ESPN2, I see you, I see you. Now we saw Chris Aldane this morning with some good ones putting in the boat. Look at this big one by Matt Heron right before we went to break. He had had a fairly slow day up to that point and turned it around completely. It actually was painfully slow, but the one thing that we got to see really transpire on Lake Eufaula, Lake that so much history with the Bassmasters there, it is to watch those guys dissect offshore structure, fishing deep water, one of the hardest things to do in bass fishing, and it was a clinic for the first two hours. That's Martin Zona, I'm Tommy Sanders, we're with you, along with Ron Moore, Ronnie Moore, and the Such, Mike Sukon here, Davey Height on the water, maybe Dave Mercer a little bit later as well, so we are so happy to be here in the Bassmaster Studios, you and all of us out there on the water, really, with the anglers, we're letting it play, just watching what's going on out there today. Take a look at our full field and how they are spread out along the 85 miles of Lake Eufaula here on the Chattahoochee River. Exactly right, and if you look at the bottom end of Lake Eufaula right there, the dam section as you head north, one of the longest playing fields we have, and it's really, it, it has two different faces, guys that are fishing offshore. A lot of this morning session with the anglers that we were with were fishing deeper, call it five to 25 feet of water. But as you move up the lake into the Chattahoochee River, that's kind of where you start to see a lot more shallow water, shallow water vegetation, woods, stuff like that. And definitely that shallower bite came into effect during our midday break. Absolutely did. We're gonna, as we say, we're gonna try to do a little forensic work on that and see what exactly happened as we continue to look at the rest of our 86 angler field, full field fishing today and tomorrow. And that is our Humminbird Lay of the Lake. And fun fact, we're our host uh -oh. city of Eufaula, Alabama, the home of Humminbird. Humminbird. Well exactly. done. That's the way it works exactly out. Exactly you right. Brock Mosley up the river there. And if you want a little current, at least before they start running it, you go up that river, maybe get a little bit more of the action. But that is a look at our playing field. Let's get back out to the action Ooh, live uh, now. And this is Patrick Walters, currently in 52nd here at the place. Right now. I uh, want to head back down the lake real quick and hit those spots that. We started on at the bottom. That way I'm gonna start working up towards Kawiki, but I didn't want to get too far away from them and have to beeline back up there. I think we got a little thing going on. I think they're biting a spinnerbait, a moving bait pretty good. They're high in the column. I think we just gotta slow down and go hit some brush piles that really haven't been hit yet. And if they have, we'll just hit enough of them. But the main thing is getting downwind from them. That way you can keep your boat positioning crucial and you don't get blow it up on top of them and you can present your bait a lot better. Huge expectations for Patrick Walters as he joined last year, yes. joined the Bassmaster Elite Series, a great, great college career, amateur career uh, at the Bass Pro level as well. And he got to his first term at the Bassmaster Elite at the St. John's River down in Florida and acquitted himself pretty well. No doubt, and really, if you looked at Patrick Walter's career in the Bassmaster College Series, into the Opens before he came to the Bassmaster Elite Series, there were big expectations, and he lived up to it for the most part for 2019. Absolutely, yeah, finished in the top 20. Angler of the year points, and uh, you have to call it a very successful season. Himself into the Classic. It was a big day there. 
on the St. John's. A lot of big days were had on the St. John's as we started out 2019. Patrick is back for another go at it. This was earlier today. And really earlier today, he probably did more moving around in the water column than the rest of the anglers that we were covering. Fishing, starting off really shallow, said he wanted to be comfortable, catch a few fish, then move offshore. And throughout this day, what's what's been cool to watch is how he's managing his areas timing-wise from the dam to about 40, 40 miles up the lake to our takeoff and trying to time it out to get back to the weigh-in later today. Weigh-in time is at 3 o'clock Eastern time, or at least check-in time for all of these anglers. They are staggered as they go out, and they go out in a different order, opposite order tomorrow as they went out today. a little bit. Well, you spoke about St. John's Lee Livesey, a Lake Fork guide, who had the circus catch of the year last year on the St. John's. He just uh, caught his third, fourth pound. He's moved up to eighth place, 17 wow. and a half today. He started slow. Movement still going on. We have spent some time early this morning with Brandon Polinick as well. Caught a real good one. Had some others to supplement uh, a limit this morning. And earlier today, really talking to Brandon Polinick before joke. this tournament began, he did not know what he was on. Oh, yeah. I said, what, what? He said, look, I have not fished much throughout practice. All yeah. I did was idle, stare at my depth finder, no. try to find as many offshore schools as I could find. He said, here's what I'll tell you. I have plenty of spots to fish. I'm just not sure what I'm on for this event. <sighs> Brandon, like so many of the anglers in this field, either. has very little tournament experience on this particular body of water. We had mentioned this in our morning hey, hey, show sorry, that buddy. the uh, Bassmaster Elite Series has never been here, and this is one of the legendary bass fishing lakes. That in the world. is what is actually bizarre about this lake. This is, in, in, in baseball terms, I guess you could put it, this is a Fenway Park. This is a Wrigley Field, sure. just a place that has a lot of history, but it does not have a lot of history with our younger anglers that don't live within an in, in hour of right. the lake. Right. So many of the anglers that we have cameras on today, Seth Fighter, Brandon Polinick said, this is my first trip to Lake Eufaula, Alabama. We're still grinding away. I keep trying a bunch of different stuff, different areas. It's hard because really the best bite right now is first thing and then pretty much after weigh-ins. And we'd check in at two o'clock and it seems like those low light hours, early morning, late evening have really been the best. Fish are just, they get bunched up and a lot more active feeding. Seems like middle of the day, they just kind of slide off and suspend and they just don't really get going any, you know, there's still certain places that they'll feed, but the overall majority of the fish, they got full bellies from the morning. Brandon Polinick, first look we had at, at him was at the, as the Bass Nation champion, the amateur champion of these United States. That qualified him to fish in the Bassmaster Classic on the Louisiana Delta, and he wound up there at Lake Katawachi, slugging it out with some of the, at that time, the best in the business. Exactly right. Lake Katawachi right there for Brandon Polinick, and from there, really, Brandon Polinick has gone on to be one of the best deep water anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series. One of the reasons we have a camera with him today. Fourth place in that very first classic. He's fished eight classics since then. Also picked up an Angler of the Year trophy. Make kind of watch you. Kind of watch you. We had to say that 10 million times. He said that he actually, I got to talk to him during our, you know, three months of no tournaments. And he said, not only is the classic 
a bucket list win for him, but he also wants to win an Open. That way he would have won at the Nation level, the wow. Open level, and Elite level, the Classic, and, and also the AOI. He feels like that's something that not a lot of people have done. And that's, that's like a complete set of books right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. We had a question from a viewer online asking about the water columns. The, Patrick Walters mentioned it, how the fish are up in the water. We talked about them suspending, how sometimes, you know, in the morning they're down on the bottom, easy to catch them, and then they suspend in the middle of the day and it gets tough. Explain what the water column is on Lake Eufaula right now. It, well, basically what happens after, after they're set up near the, closer near the bottom in the morning when they're feeding, it, it seems like these schools on this lake break up. And the schools on this lake seem to be a lot smaller than usual Tennessee River style lakes that we go to this time of year where there's 100 bass, 150 bass. It seems like a lot of bass on a spot here right now is a dozen, maybe 15 bass. The other thing that I think happens on this lake a lot, there's a lot of flooded, straight flooded timber. We've seen guys like Seth Fighter, we've seen Patrick Walters catching them on a spinnerbait to where a lot of those fish suspend up in them. They're not really relating to the surface. They're not relating to the bottom of the lake. They're kind of in that in-between area. I think that's why you're seeing a spinnerbait play a lot more than usual offshore tournaments that we've covered. Yeah, here we are. It's 11-11. Uh, um, we got a 2.20 check-in, so we got plenty of time today. We got, th what, three hours? Um, I want to save that, really, that last hour. I don't know if the current's supposed to pick up today or what. There's one. Little guy. Um, I've been idling for the last, you know, 30, 45 minutes, just kind of looking for new stuff. And this one came out of a brush pile right there in about 50, or, yeah, about 15 feet of water. <laughs> but we're still sitting on that bag we caught this morning. I want to add to, you know, what we have um, as far as our patterns and areas go. Um, you know, I'm not really desperate to, to catch, catch a fish right now. So I'd, I'd really like to set myself up for the rest of the week and, and really expand on what we got. I am gonna go back shallow though here in the last, and then the next maybe hour and a half and then save that last hour for the deep stuff again. I haven't really seen anyone on my best spot. I mean, that guy might be maybe close. But, you know, I'm trying to decide whether I want to stop and fish it or not, and I don't, I don't think I will. I think I'll just save it for tomorrow morning. I really think I could go shallow and catch, catch a big one or two. Chris Aldane, one win with the Bassmaster Elite Series. It's that, again, a, a Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship Tournament on Sturgeon Bay back in 2015. Yeah, Smallmouth country. Lake Michigan. Big water had a lot of big waves in that event right there. And, and, and you can kind of start to hear Zaldane planning out tomorrow. Yeah. We talked about that if you didn't join us on the broadcast this morning. So many of our leaders really caught their five fish stringer in, in the first 90 minutes, uh, even before we went live and then kind of backed out of those areas, trying to manage them for days two through Rest four. Rest them up a yes. bit, yeah. So we can look forward to Chris trying his, his deep water stuff a little later, the last part of the day. At least he professed he was gonna do that. It's just so hard finding bite, you know, feeding schools of fish. It just, it happens early and it happens late. And in between time, you'd really just kind of one here, one there. And the only thing that will change that is if they open up the dam and to really start pushing current through, then those deep fish will really set up on this offshore structure and they're easier to catch. Chris Aldane forging on there. He was in the lead earlier today. He's dropped down to uh, right now out of the top 10, but he's not that far behind, about three, 
three and a half pounds or so, so certainly one fish can undo all of that uh, loss in a in short order right there. Kyle Monty of Florida, Okeechobee guy. The top of the leaderboard, Jake Kinda Whitaker. Kind of came out of nowhere yeah. today. <laughs> we did not see him coming. Jake Whitaker, former national champion on the college level. We'll be back after this. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bass University is all about. If you love bass fishing, <laughs> then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. The DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. Lake Eufaula on the Chattahoochee River, probably about as much of the legend and lore of bass fishing as any waterway in the country. We're having a great tournament here today as we uh, get going again, resume the series, resume the 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series. Kyle Monty has shot up to the lead with 20 pounds right there. Jake Whitaker right after. All this happened while we were letting him fish uh, unmolested by us during the half hour at the middle of the day. Clark Wenlent, the Texas legend, also moving up there into the top three. Moving down, Drew Cook, uh, the likes of Brandon Lester, Cody Holland. Uh, from West Coast guy from out there in Oregon. Beaverton, Oregon. He, he made the long trip to Florida to start his season and got a good, respectable result there. Top 25 there. So, Cody Holland looking a lot better, looking good in Angler of the Year points as of right now. But this is only day one of four days of fishing. Hey, we, we got an opportunity here at BMW Trailer Hitches live on the line with that aforementioned legend of fishing, Clark Wenland. Mark having a good time today here. Yeah, Gar we hey, go. Clark, thanks for, for letting us visit and intrude for a minute here. Tell us, uh, kind of size up what's go going on with you today. Well, I've had a good morning. It's not been fast. You know, a lot of times when you think offshore, you think ledges. And, um, you know, you're thinking, you know, one after another after another. And sometimes that's the way it happens. For me, it's not necessarily happening that way. I'm fishing more isolated cover. And, um, you know, brush piles, I'm sure you guys have heard that. And, you know, I, this, this lake is just one of those lakes that guys come to or, you know, locals or who. And there's a lot of regular cover out there, too. There, there used to be pole timber out, and there's just tons of cover. And a lot of it I'm just finding offshore where you can't see it. 
Clark, are, 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 you, are you catching the, these fish in, in one general area, or has it just been one here, one there, where you're covering multiple spots? No, totally multiple spots. I, I caught two good ones off one spot today, but for the most part, I'm just I'm just covering water and actually fishing stuff right now that I've not even fished. Um, you know, it's not it's not that I'm like, you know, like I, I'm kind of resting stuff, but brush is easy to find here. I can find piles fairly fast, and so once I idle a hundred yards, I'll find another brush and I'll just stop and fish. Clark, talk about how unique this lake is right now, being a little bit higher, where you kind of have to pick your poison. Do you do you dedicate time offshore? Do you spend a lot of time fishing shallow to where it's almost like you have to commit to one or the other? Yeah, and Z, I'll be, I mean, this morning on my way down here, I started thinking, I, I gotta go shallow, I gotta go shallow. You know, it, it was just a perfect day. You got cloud cover. The water's a little bit higher than normal. You got flooded grass everywhere. It's a good lake. I mean, I can throw a frog or a variety of top waters, but my fear is, is that I just wasn't going to give it enough time. You know, it, what I found in practice, you got to go and do that and do that. And you'll go through lulls and then you'll get a bite. And I just, even though that's really my strength and style to go up there shallow, I just didn't think it was going to work. And at least for me, I've been burned on this lake, Lake Eufaula. I've been burned on this lake shallow, maybe every time I've ever fished it. Unless you're here in April, March, April, or, you know, maybe the end of May or the first of May. But, you know, in this particular one, I, I decided I got to go offshore. That's where they live the majority of the time. And I'll just take my chance. Clark Winlet, thank you. Great stuff from Clark Winlet right there, a man who has been fishing at the very highest level for a long, long time, fishing obviously at the highest level today. Now, to Ronnie Moore, the screen of knowledge, and Ronnie, you're responsible for populating the screen of knowledge with, well, knowledge, <laughs> but something. you've been in the laboratory. You've, you've worked up some, some new technology for us, right? We've got some of the catches, and that's one thing that we want to know is where some of these guys are, how far offshore they are, what kind of structure they may be fishing, and when Clark just dished it out, he just told us exactly isolated cover that he's fishing. He's not fishing the bank, he is fishing offshore, but that doesn't always mean out in the middle of the lake, Z. We've talked about it. Uh, uh, this big stretch of area, there's a lot of catches here, but they are isolated deals. There are probably 10 or 15 catches in this region of the map right here, but they're all probably a separate brush pile or two as you go down this bank. Out in front of those docks, just like we talked about some of these places where docks hold fish, vegetation holds fish, but when they leave that, where do they go? Sometimes it's out here in the middle of the lake, Sometimes it's to shallower brush piles and whatnot, and it seems like Windlet has a good stretch of those, and he started his morning off on a great one of 5-6 at 6 o'clock this morning to get his day off started on the right foot. All right, a good look at the, what's gone down with Clark Winlet, and he's, of course, supplemented all the, the knowledge and the philosophy behind it, all the planning that went into the way he's fishing on you fall of the day as we get you back out live on the water. You know, we covered a little bit of it this this morning you heard so much about brush piles Burn brush piles that a lot of the locals talk there. about that this time of year the, the, these fish leave the brush piles and get on that traditional hard bottom like kentucky lake bottom mm -hmm. wheeler stuff like that where it's it's just areas that current has swept and hit over the years shell bars so many you know muscle bars on all these reservoirs that we go to and a lot of the locals will tell you they're just not there yet. The the spring was so late, uh, the lake basically just stabilized and got a lot clearer that the fish are not yet out on those oh, traditional here, yeah. hard bottom areas. A little news from Keith Combs. He just filled his limit with a four pounder and a two pounder. He jumped up to a 30th place, 14 pounds. And then I scanned it and there was fish everywhere i was like i might want to come back to the spot you know it's you got to go where you got confidence where you caught fish and this is i caught the biggest fish i caught in practice was right here yesterday but i think it had a lot to do with conditions that storm was coming through it was between thunderstorms 
and I think they just were really biting and that's why that big one bit. But once I got bit, you know, then I turned around and I started scanning the point to see what was here. And you could see them on the side scan, on the side imaging, the hummingbird. It's just, you turn that mega on there and it'll show you every fish that lives down there. And there was, I mean, I, you can't say they're all bass, but there was 30 plus fish down there. That old big was feeding on something. No surprise, our friend Tom Abraham from Bassmaster, Bassmaster Radio, Radio noting because this lake is on the Alabama Georgia border, he said, obviously, Man, no doubt. So appetizing, don't they? It's the so Alabama hard to fish side is deep totally deep dominating the Georgia side of the lake <laughs> right now. That's and then, and then I go and show a map saying windlets only on the Georgia side, and it makes it just, it, uh, it clears it, it up completely. It was <laughs> pre his message, you know, for yeah. the screen and knowledge. You, you ruined his meme SEC, right there. I think it's the SEC yeah. thing he's doing right there. I think he's trying to stir the pot. You talked about they're not totally committed to these harder, these, these Kentucky, like Pickwick Lake type ledge situations. They're going out there. Instead, the brush piles, which we talked about at length today, when you talk about the, the, the first type, it's not just finding the right place. You have to line up and fish it properly. Is that true of a brush pile as well? I mean, you, could, you have guys that can come behind people and catch them off a brush pile where the average guy can't to, do it. To everything, everything that we've watched today and throughout the, really the last two decades, and we really don't talk about it enough, when these guys are catching them off brush piles, it is all boat positioning. Every up, single Brent, cast yeah, you're, ma you're making. Lights, one on this corner, one on that corner yesterday. And it was when it was raining. So I don't know if they relate to these when it's cloudy and windy, but the conditions seem right. And I shook the bites off and they were, they were solid, you know. Solid bites. Every cast those guys are making on those brush piles are basically dissecting the perimeter and the center of that brush pile. And they're able to look at them on their 360, oh, on their graphs, yeah. to where there is not a single wasted cast. Bill Lowen's back at it again, a four and a half pounder. He's up to uh, four ounces swallows. shy of 20 pounds, second him. place. Look at, oh, look at the babies. Look at the babies right there, sticking their heads out. <laughs> a little apartment complex there under the bridge baby. there with the babies and Chris Saldane making a little bridge play here early afternoon, or actually it's still morning know. technically. Yeah. But, uh, Local time, still morning, 11.27 in the morning. I got about two and a half hours of fishing time left to go. Well, Sal Dane put on a show this morning, that is for sure. Giant bass Welcome this back, morning. Baby. It is staggering it's how, giant. Uh, unofficially, how tight our That's weights are high. right now in the top two. 10, which usually, usually sets up for a great rest of the week. <laughs> it does, that's always good news for us. We don't like to see anyone running away. Yeah, look at the difference there. A two and a half, less than two and a half pounds separating one from 10 right there. Good stuff as we see new, new faces popping up in that top 10 right there. And Kyle Monty from Okeechobee, third year. The Bassmaster Elite Series doing very well there. We're gonna take a quick break and we're just getting started with our afternoon session. We'll be back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here.
You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Thanks so much for joining us here on day one of this tournament as we get the Bassmaster Elite Series going again in 2020. Tomorrow, be day number two, same story. Rounds continue, 8 a.m. for the first three hours, back at noon for the second three hours, just like we are doing today. We're gonna take you up to three o'clock Eastern time. About check in time for most of these anglers. Kyle Monty, the Floridian. I don't know how many people's radar Kyle was on here, but he is, uh, he has shown him he can get it done here. The first man to crack 20 pounds. Bill Lowen, the veteran right behind him. Jake Whitaker, third year angler. Clark Winlet, another legend in there. Matt Heron, Garrett Palcat. Really one of the things we talked about early this morning for a four day total, we thought it was gonna be around that, somewhere hovering near that 80 pound range. So right on target. I guarantee you, we've even heard of several of our anglers earlier this morning once they get near that 18 to 20 pound mark, they're looking for a lot more areas to get them through the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's four days, four full days of competition. You can't just uh, break everything you've got on the first day. Here we go. Hmm, is that fighter? 37 going shallow. Boy, very interesting seeing him go shallow. He's lived offshore all morning long, but had some big bites yesterday in practice. And earlier this morning, Seth was one of the anglers that, and he's usually pretty quiet Sir. about it. He said, I'm, I'm going to be a factor this in this thing. tournament. I'm catching him really strong. And it just never got, it was just kind of slow. It's not that he's had a bad day or really a good day. We did see him lose one real yeah, big fish. Yeah, that was two steps help. back right there for sure. I hurt, but. Yeah, no one discounts the possibility he could put himself on a pile of them at the end of the fishing time today and absolutely do what he expected to do first thing this morning. And, and one of the things that Seth talked about was he was fishing very isolated areas away from the crowd. He said, I purposely did not look out deep where I saw really other boats. Good. I looked for more really isolated, subtle structure. Do that, yeah. And this fish right here, very, very costly. for a mayfly hatch or for some one. of these creature Ugh. type spawns up shallow that help these fish in the summertime. How are they affected by storms? We've had storms all week. It looks beautiful up there. The grass looks great, plenty of water, but why wouldn't it be as great of a bite compared to, you know, normal stable weather? Well, it's just that time of year where the majority of the population of this lake, if you look at the history especially this time of year, the majority of the population of bass are out. They're offshore. When this lake hits level 188.5 or higher, when it approaches 190, which I believe is where, where it's at, those fish that were moving offshore tend to instantly go back shallow. And, and when you combine, we talked about it early, earlier today, high water, a mayfly hatch. Last week was a full moon, which always has a tendency to bring fish shallow. Hey, big Walter's hooked up. Walter's hooked up. Oh, Ooh. man. We're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of been decent move come back down here. Spinner bug. Oh, spinner bug. That's old Bango right there. Old Bango had to bail me out. Whew. There's that guy and that guy. Y'all are pretty close, huh? He went full-blown crouching tiger right there too. <laughs> he did, did he? Yeah. Halfway yeah. through that. Don't want that fish jumping no. off for sure. That one, that's the biggest he's seen all day. Yeah, he needed that one down. You can put three and, three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, good one, Patrick Walter. 
All right, three and a quarter. <laughs> Check that. Talk about that bite, how, where we're at. Well, we came back down the lake and I caught my second fish, second keeper actually off of this brush pile. It's a little brush off a little knob. It's not much. And uh, I was almost about to put the spinner back down. It just, this water's a lot clearer on the lower end of the lake. And sometimes that'll mess with them where they'll just want to eat a, a swim bait or something. But it was worth the run to come down here and check it one more time. We only had to run three miles, but it is the opposite direction of the ramp. But with a fish like that, that helps. I'm actually doing this on a, like a cranking rod. This is a Tatula, a Daiwa Tatula, like a spinnerbait rod, but it's more of a glass rod. And you can see when he bites it, the rod really loads up, but that allows me not to jerk it out of his mouth. Cause usually if you're throwing just a straight graphite rod, I mean, right when you feel the bite, you pull it and he doesn't get the whole bait, but that allows him to inhale the whole bait and get you a good hookup. Z, I don't like to, I don't want to pat myself on the back, oh, but I feel got, like oh, I called it when I, when I told you what that this guy now? was going to be a star of somewhat, the I versatility. Know, you did call it. I mean, he's my age and he knows stuff that we shouldn't know yet. Just got to keep him honest. Well, we've talked about it throughout the years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. He's a flat liner. He doesn't, he's not too high, not too low, just kind of does his own deal. Yeah, very businesslike about it. You seeing more spinner baits or less than you thought you'd see it on Lake Eufaula? Way more. It's been a good bit Way of Way more. This, more than we have at the average um, tournament. Yeah, the I mean, last if you five really years. look at a lot of our offshore events, it, it's usually cranking a big 10 inch worm uh, a lot more, which a lot of the anglers said they felt that there was a many, many bass especially with not a lot of current many of the bass were suspended up off the bottom and, I, and i'll tell you i think some of the most critical information that we got today was from clark wendelin even though we talk about that there's guys catching them shallow and we're probably going to have a camera or two with some of the leaders that might be shallow i'd like to give a big shout out too to the guys at phantom outdoors with the buff the the sun protection gloves i got all the sun hood that's what i was talking earlier about putting my hood on one of those sun shirts what i'm gonna end up doing is i'm gonna get man to give me a crop top what you think from under my jersey that way it's like cut off right here belly shirt cut off the sleeves but at least i got my hood yeah did carl jacobson go to a different lake i think he, he might have first, Seminole. Did, it went to did rainy lake somewhere i think else? it's called yeah yeah but but i think what clark small. said i think what clark said holds a lot of power you can go shallow here a day or two and maybe squeak out three this time of year. But day in and day out, the guys that we've covered that have been offshore, that's what's going to hold the trophy at the end of this. You can pull up on one place and then 10 casts have 20 pounds here, so. It's all a mental game right now. Pretty good little squall out to the out to the right of uh, Carl Jockinson there. Expected it's going to be some in the area decisions. this afternoon. What's weird is Carl was just around the corner from Fighter when we came and first visited Fighter when he moved shallow. They were just around a bend from each other. I don't know if Carl made a move or not. Boy, buddy Gross, a uh, pre-tournament favorite in his uh, bracket. Four and a half pounder. Boy, he's, he's up to, to 30th place. He was down near he's, past 50. Yep. One fish got him 20 spots at least. You just have to feel that, you know, if you don't follow the Bassmaster Elite Series, um, but if you do, you, you tend to know this on these offshore tournaments this time of year, 
it always tends to the guys that are fishing deeper, their areas tend to replenish. They reload a lot better from day to day to day compared to earlier in the year when a lot of fish are shallow. Those areas reload. It just does the complete opposite this time of year. Now, you're right, uh, Ronnie, looking at the map, look like Carl has made yeah, a move north from, from where he was. A couple showers are popping up in the northern end of the lake. Boy, that's a critical, critical fish for Patrick Walters. Good timing right there. He's a nice one. Three and a half, three and a quarter pounds. Improves his outlook significantly at this point. Long, skinny fish, too. Yes. Totally postponed. For sure. Got plenty more fishing yet to come in this afternoon session, this three-hour session. We've just eaten up about the three-quarters of an hour of it so far, and we got more on the way, taking you up till about 3 got Eastern the big, time. Biggest fish of the day, Wes Logan, a five-and-a-half pounder. Wow. Oh, man, oh, man. Starting to pop wow. out there, possibly. We'll be in to check on that in just a few minutes. We're going to take ourselves a quick break right here and be back with more of that Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mencota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. Skeeter, is it still setting the standard? Let's see. First Bass Boat, first U.S. Coast Guard approved Bass Boat, first Behold Pack Design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bass Boat. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex Series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Oh, for most of us, there's been a general yearning to watch the best in the business competing at the highest level live. We're getting that today. Next stop on the Bassmaster Elite Series is going to be July 14th, mm -hmm. 15th, 16th, and 17th. Going to the Finger Lakes. Had a fantastic tournament there last year at Cayuga Lake. Union Springs, New York, and that's the first of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tournaments in the Empire State, New York. A great place to go bass fishing. Absolutely one of the best lakes, not only in the state of New York, of all the tournaments we cover throughout a season, Cayuga Lake, one of the best lakes in the country. Just perfectly suited for tournament fishing, too. I mean, we always have good close finishes there, and it's, it's, it's just a great place. We get a great pictures and a beautiful spot. It's just like a, a little vacation. 
suit. You told oh. us about Wes Logan bringing in possibly the, or was it the biggest bass that we have recorded yes, so far? From, so far, Phoenix Boat's big bass at five and a half pounds. Well, there's Wes Logan right there, the Alabama native. And Wes, uh, hey man, tell us about what you just put in the boat there. Come on. Uh, you know, a blind hog finds a nut every now and then. I think it just ran into my bait, to be honest. Uh, I hadn't seen a fish like that all week. Not even close, to be honest. How big would you call it? I weighed it. It's a five and a half. Five. I, everything I've got, I've weighed. So it's, it's accurate as it can be, as my scales are. It's got an eight-pound head with a five-pound body. Wes, great, man. That, 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 is, that is a good one there for you. And, and we'll, we'll be back to talk with you later, I'm sure. But we're going to let you fish for right now. Uh, carry on and good luck for the rest of your day. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Wes is one of those guys that definitely expected to live shallow this whole tournament, trying to probably like a swim jig in the grass or a frog. That's kind of his style. It's just like a Kyle Welcher. Those guys are both suited similarly. Mm -hmm. Not that they can't fish offshore, but they love to make it work up shallow. Wes is going to be a, a bit yeah. of a, a powerhouse the next few years on this tour. What's, what's funny is when you see a break like the last three months where guys haven't been doing tournament fishing, yeah. you get to see the ones that really want it and they try to – they try to make it work and they do videos, they do all these things. They're really excited about being on the Elite Series and in the position and, and Wes being a rookie is one of those for sure. Okay. Yeah, morning was slower than I expected. Uh, did lose one nice one, which would have gave me a mediocre bag, but we're kind of sucking right now. Got one good one, two okay ones, and two rats. And uh, my deep fish just kind of quit biting, I'd say about 10, 11 o'clock. Went a long time without getting a bite fishing out deep, so. Um, I kind of expected that, so. Now we're just up shallow, swimming a jig around this water willow. I hadn't done this much in practice, but for the limited amount of time I did it in practice, I got a fair amount of bites. Um, so now I'm just, I'm probably gonna do this till about one o'clock and then maybe try to get on that brush later in the day, see if those fish start firing again. And, you know, we need two good ones, so. I don't care if we catch them shallow or out of the brush, but we got about two hours to catch two quality fish and get rid of the little guys we got or else we're gonna be in big time trouble. There you see the bio on Seth right there from New Market, Minnesota, Minneapolis area, 35 years old. Minnetonka, of course his home lake, flipping, loves his duck hunting. Six years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. It had some, had some heroics to make it into his first uh, Angler of the Year Championship uh, on the Mississippi River in Wisconsin to get into that, and he went on to win that tournament. That was a, that was his rig launching point. Yep, taking a look at a tournament we had up on Mill Lax, and it 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 was one of the biggest smallmouth beatdowns. I mean. He lapped the field in that tournament, turned around. That was one of the biggest stringers of smallmouth for three days we had ever seen mm -hmm. until he did this last year on Lake St. Clair. And really, if you look at the two smallmouth events that that he's won, they were three-day events, but he would have attacked a hundred, the, the century mark oh, yeah. for smallmouth, which we've not seen before, correct, Rob? We've never seen the century mark with smallmouth, but they know, we know that St. Lawrence is a possibility, St. Clair, I don't know if a Malax four-day event could do it, but I know those three places are probably the best opportunities at straight smallmouth, 100 pounds. And, and he was ginning up every day. Usually it's the other way. He was he was increasing yes, his catch pretty much every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. I would have just gone out on that on that fourth day by myself and tried to catch 22 pounds real Call quick. Good. Like, oh, Give yeah, yourself see, a belt. Go I, I knew I would have done it. I, I didn't do anything different. Yeah. He actually came to my house after St. Clair and we grilled <laughs> I steaks. I wrote about that. Yeah. That's exactly Can I right. hang with you, Z? That's right.
gosh, you'd like to see that bite transpire oh, fishing man, that shallow water. grass. I'm just dripping slat and ain't even that warm. Who did the video where he said it was like getting a 200 inch deer that it's hard to top what he just did at St. Clair last year? Say that again. Somebody did that video. Was you, Ronnie? I didn't. I don't. I didn't do that. Video. <laughs> I didn't do that. Solid, solid. No, what Such said was that doing what he did smallmouth wise was like oh, a feat it, of catch uh, two hundred inch you know, beam. Yeah, how's he gonna oh. top it in his life? That day, that week of fishing. It, but it, it, to do that twice, to oh. be at a five pound or better average, that's astronomical. That's not like pitching a perfect game. That's like pitching three perfect games mm -hmm. in a row. What's crazy is it, he wasn't just catching five big ones a day. I mean, he, he probably right. caught 21 limits of four pounders. It's ridiculous you know, letting people into his spot. Well, the first day he said he just got very right, fortunate Jake, on roll. the community hall. Right. a lot more fun. Whew. Golly. I thought we were going to be throwing back three pounders, no problem. Let's get some airflow going. Fish one more bridge over here. This is, uh, I've been throwing a swim jig along these banks here with water willow. And basically I'm just trying to mix it up between real flat bank and real steep bank and try to determine are they on the flat stuff or steep stuff. So I'm really trying to find a new pattern right now. But I'm gonna go fish another bridge. This bridge I got bit on as well. Another swim bait bridge. Board. The top five have been totally replaced. It's totally turned over in the past yeah. 90 minutes, which is kind of remarkable. And again, we don't know what time of our leaders. We don't know what time those fish really got caught. Some of them that we had for, up yeah, there for with Monte. With Monte, Monte he was by himself. He doesn't right. have a marshal. He's inputting those, so he could have put them all in at the same time. Or, but like a Whitaker, it's been a slow. Every 30 minutes, he was catching right. one kind of thing. For the majority. You had better catch them in the first two and a half hours of this event. It was painfully clear this morning, for sure. And it'll be a new, a new bunch of guys with a, a better opportunity tomorrow morning as they reverse the takeoff we'll be with schedule the top from six. one to two. Yeah. yeah, we'll be with the top yeah. six. On yeah. day yeah. one, we're just kind of throwing darts at, at the board on, right. on some of the best anglers we think we can do well or get some good coverage from, and, and then it's performance-based the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Brandon Polinick. Well, I think you guys just missed us catching a big old catfish. But I thought I saw some fish right back there when we idled up. So we're gonna kind of work our way back up there to them. We've got an old road bed down here and they're kind of just scattered scattered along it. That uh, must be Taku. I don't even, I didn't even see him there. Talking about Taku Ito, rookie this year on the Elite Series. He's supposed to be the, the stud uh, in Japan. Like he's the next, the next big angler right. to come over to the US. Oh, remember this tournament. Oh, oh yeah. Sanders. Walked through a lot of difficulty, especially, I want to say it was day two, taking a hook in the hand, mid-morning. Went to the Baxter Memorial County Hospital there. Nothing. Your Bull Shoals. Nothing fun. Where they Nothing actually fun. have a board of, of honor hey, there of pain. things they've pulled out of people hook-wise on the lake. Board on of pain. Board. Yes, the yes. Board of Pain. And there. the White maybe, River, yeah. It was, yes. uh, maybe, maybe they'll show it for us here. 
that one yeah. went up there. Yeah, that was not fun. That's, no. that's not what you want to do. And lost a lot of fishing time no. is what was going through his mind. And he had almost done that several different times that we've covered him on the water. There, there's the board there's of pain the board right of pain. there. That came out of people. All of those right there. <laughs> that's that's sort of gr grotesque. Notice and, down and in the, the right hand corner that's a chainsaw. That like that. Right yeah, there. that is right. right. Things go right. on up there in northwest Arkansas. Yeah. Yes, North they Central do. Central Arkansas. We got to see a little bit of that happen at Lake Gunnersville last year. Kelly J, we got to see him hook himself. Oh, that was a whole production. Yes. Ambulance yeah, ride, yeah. Right. He got to jump in the ambulance fun, and get, fun, it, fun. get it numbed up to take it out. Nothing like the Board of Pain. No, Board of Pain, that's a good jumping <laughs> off place. Listen, when they're not biting, you can go <laughs> roll the Board of Pain. <laughs> now. Right. Right now, Kyle Monty hey. on top with 20 pounds, still our only anger. Unofficially, those are all Bass Track numbers there and subject to be corrected. And they will be corrected. Come way in time, it all becomes official. That's coming up after 3 o'clock. Any efficient to go between now and then. Monty Lowen Whitaker Wendland. We're going to take ourselves a little bit of a break here and be back with more of Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 Let's at go. Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Saber FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Today, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, the first round of the Major League Baseball Draft on ESPN. Rounds 2 through 5 are tomorrow on ESPN2. That starts at 5 Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific time. Only five rounds this year due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Carl Ravitch hosting from the Bristol Studios alongside MLB insider, draft expert Kylie McDaniel. A bunch of other experts chiming in as well remotely. All rounds available on the ESPN app. And the first round is also going to be available on ESPN Deportes. We are elated to be out with live bass fishing today. The start of the restart of the 2020 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the best in the business, clashing over the course of eight regular season tournaments. This is just the second one due to all the, the postponements, the delays, all the 
a little trouble, but uh, we're happy to this get started. This might be the first Bass Tournament you've watched. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be. It could be. Kyle Monty is an angler from the Lake Okeechobee area of extreme South Florida. He is the man on top right now. Coming up big on day number one, but there's four days of fishing. We'll have coverage of all four for you here on Bassmaster Live. If you are tuning in for the first time, it is such a unique sport. There's everyone's individual, like a, like a golf tournament or like NASCAR, except it's all on these guys. No pit crews, no caddies, no anything a like tough that. On this. Managing time, the elements, and your playing field isn't just a gym; it's a, just There's a massive body of water. No, it's a massive public body of yeah, water, public, which yeah. we yeah. talked is, about yeah. earlier today. Yeah. One of the factors in this event, a lot of the anglers feel, is going to be that there is an enormous local tournament here on Saturday, which are, will be our final day. Yeah. It'll be championship Saturday, which could play a big factor. But those local anglers are so nice, they'll let our 10 guys get to their spots, right? Or not. Or some some might, some or might not. The different parts of the country are different. But that's a great point. Very few sports take place on public venues. We don't, we don't do NASCAR on Interstate 5 that's in California right. for <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah, because right. the jet skiers there. Yeah, right. Different, different skill set for sure. And Menno, we've seen guys get flustered with yes. uh, the public and other guys just let it roll and keep rolling themselves. Trying to make those decisions. Well, we've got about two hours left, and we started off really good this morning. First spot we rolled up on, second cast, I caught one. A few more casts after that, caught another one, lost one, caught one. And it was good. I got on a good school this morning um, and didn't really have any company there. That was nice. Usually you find a school like that, you get multiple guys on them, multiple guys find them but didn't have any company. They just, the size wasn't there. You know, I caught a lot of two to two and a half pounders. And that's kind of just what we've been stuck on. I've been running around the rest of the morning, either. catching some small fish here and there, but just nothing that I feel comfortable with. Hey, 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 sorry, buddy. And I've, I've just had a hard time getting like dialed into an area or exactly what I want to be keying in on. Oh, that's a bass. He like I'm just quick. keeping my head down and he quit grinding it out. I think you've got eight hours. And I've won more tournaments oh, on my last down. cast than I have on my first cast. We got to watch one of those wins, Tommy. Sure Rayburn. did. Rayburn. Rayburn. AOY. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and closing out AOY. Yep. And, and almost on the last cast. I mean, it was just like, the yeah, defining that. fish that won the tournament for him on almost the last cast. I think a lot of these guys were that. See Patrick Walters hooked up right here. Just landed a good one about uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. I don't think that one's going to make it. I think a lot of the... Lake Eufaula also threw a curveball today for some of the guys because our, our, if you really looked at their, they have a three-day practice session. Uh, we were dealing with low skies, wind, rain, and then it would clear and be beautiful. I, I think a lot of those passing fronts that were going through probably led a lot of anglers to think maybe they were on a little more than they really oh, wow. were. Coming here, cut him. Hold in. After a month of wild weather, I mean, coolest May probably in a long time. Hot weather last right. week, it was just, it was everything. And the other thing is that, that you're dealing with a lake, the boys. fish are pretty smart in this lake with how many tournaments have been here the last few weeks. This is a lake that is religiously fished throughout, you know, May and June. That's all beat up fish, wasn't it? I know, that's what it's like. I think they, certain piles eat certain things and certain times of the day they eat certain baits.
were just talking about that moment back in 2017, Sam Rayburn, and a last minute uh, massive fish catch there that just did everything for Brandon Polinick and his career. One single fish catch, the power of one fish catch. And actually, we, he talked to us about it earlier. Oh, gosh. Oh, it was in the brush pile. Oh, it's huge. Oh, gosh. That's it right there, baby. Stay on there. I'm coming right there, man. That's her. Easy. Easy, girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Dude, my heart is pumping so bad. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here, dude. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there! 236, man! Oh, brother, look at that. 236! I can't even unhook that thing. <laughs> 15. 515, baby. There's our six pounder. Oh. One cast, 15 minutes left, Tommy. That's a hundred, hundred thousand wow. dollars. That makes you <laughs> feel good. We go to Bassmaster Texas Fest from 2016, 2017, excuse me. The power of one fish at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, that was some good stuff. <laughs> we had some good times there. 236. That's what I'm talking about. You win derbies on your last cast right at the end of the day. Crazy, three years later and he still remembers the exact time. Like that's what's, that's funny. <laughs> this is the time of day where they do start to generate water really probably in the last hour. And a lot of the anglers said after practice, when they start moving that water, pulling current, for electricity is when this lake would start to turn on for a second time. There was an early window and then that late day bite. And for guys like Carl and Seth Fighter, that this is gonna be critical to keep them in the game the rest of the week. You were saying that you thought it would be more offshore here. compared to, to a, a split between shallow and offshore. It was like the yes. guy was gonna have to just do that. What about a single fish or two that helps you bridge the gap where you have 12 pounds offshore and you go catch two uh, three pounders to, to bridge your gap? Big crankbait right here. 25 footer. Well, I'm gonna switch to a little bit more of a translucent color. Let's see if that makes any difference. Sometimes you get these super pressured fish. And you just need a little color change. That more translucent color can sometimes make a difference. Throwing it on that big 7.9 Alpha Angler rod. AFCO tastes the bait right there for Brandon Pollock. Fishing right at the, looks like he's right at the face of the dam. About 40 miles, 45 miles from our takeoff. To answer that, what you said is catching 12 or 13 pounds and going shallow, catching a big one. Very hard to do four days in a row. Oh, for sure. You <laughs> know, just bridge the gap on a day one and save yourself. I think you know, there's yeah, a lot of guys survive. right now for today in survival mode that had a bad morning. Brandon Polnick tries on a new crankbait and tries his luck. We're going to take ourselves a break here in just a moment. Take a look.
Our leaderboard, this is Bass Track, unofficial weights right now. Kyle Monty still on top. Bill Lowen, Jake Whitaker, Clark Winland, Drew Benton, a man who's made a move. He's bumped back into fifth place. We'll be back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. find a Toyota Tacoma. It's the best-selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Sign up to compete in the inaugural Hook Bassmaster BASS Nation Kayak Series, powered by Tourney X, presented by Abu Garcia in 2020. The trail features five regular season events, with a championship to be held in conjunction with the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. The first tournament will be at Logan Martin Lake in Hell City, Alabama on March 5th, in conjunction with the 50th Bassmaster Classic. To find out more details and to register, visit Bassmaster.com slash kayak. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. Jenny Brower needs 19 pounds. Jenny Brower. Back in 2004, pounds. one of the greatest of all time and in the space of two years, Denny notching his Brower. second victory here at Lake Eufaula. Denny Brower will never forget Lake Eufaula. That was a shallow water effort for sure. And uh, boy, a lot of his fans just went, well, all of them went crazy. Absolutely. I was there. Enjoyed all that action two years before he won it. 2002, finishing four ounces behind him. Who was it? In 2002. Wait, oh, wow, I don't know that one. Uh, Davey Hyde. Davey Hyde. Yeah, Davey Hyde. Davey Hyde. Davey Our Hyde. own Davey, Davey Hyde. Hyde. I think Davey got second and fourth in those events, respectively. Yeah, yeah. Second and third. We'll be checking in with Davey before too long. There's our leaderboard right now. According to Bass Track, Kyle Monty, Bill Lowen, Jake Whitaker on top right now. Clark Wenlet, we got to visit with Clark in the last hour. Laid out pretty well what he's doing. Drew Benton, Matt Heron. Here at Paquette, who held the league for the better part of this morning. Still hanging in there in the top ten, but he has been passed. Still pretty tight, though. Everything pretty tight as we take a look at the six anglers we are with all day long here. Seth Fighter has uh, abandoned the deep water to go into the vegetation and fish shallow. Needing to make something happen here. There's no doubt about that for Seth Fighter. Even though we're across the country from Texas, this feels like Rayburn where 
a good portion of the people are fishing shallow around grass and whatnot, and they Does. you know they might make the top ten, but they can't contend because yeah. the top two guys at Rayburn ended up being big guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Give me an air bump. Woo! He got it. He didn't rip my legs off. You got the outcast swim jig choked. I mean, I don't know why I reached down and grabbed him, but I tried boat flipping one in practice and he got off, so. All right. Good trade. Yeah, yes sir. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's my little quarter yeah, pound cull will get uh, fighter yeah, inside the top right. 40. Air bump. Definitely was that. <sighs> you picked the wrong crappy, decrepit dock. Trying to call your shot, it was the next one now. Tighten up, dude. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Big old streaker come out of the willow grass. Dude, it is Safari Africa hot right now. I don't even know if I'm gonna go back deep, man. I think I can just swim a jig around and catch another decent fish. Z, you were talking about a fighter is one of those guys that was living offshore all early. morning, wanted to live offshore this whole event, but he's now moved shallow. What are they, we were talking about what they're looking for offshore. What is it? Well, there's really two different ways to look at this. Number one, we talked about standing timber that's in Lake Eufaula really throughout the entire system. And that's kind of what that standing timber is going to look like on your mega imaging okay you, if you look at the timber right here you'll see a bait pile in the top and then you'll see fish suspended up off the bottom some fish on the bottom and really that's not exactly what our guys are concentrating on we talked about brush piles all morning long and this next picture right here is a perfect image of that you're going to notice the branches of the brush pile right here connected to the bottom the baits up in the top and you'll see a lot more fish kind of bunkered down in these brush piles and here's the one thing that we talked about earlier this morning is these brush piles are not like the size of our desk here in studio. Some of these guys will bring them out on flatbed trailers, put them onto pontoon boats, and dump them in. But this right here, at least today offshore, has been the major player that I think we're going to see going into day two. This, this explains why, even though these two brush piles are in 22, 25 feet of water, why we're seeing guys throw big spinner baits, because it goes all the way up to seven, six feet of water <laughs> at the top, and they can brush it by the sides of it, not necessarily down at the well, bottom. Here's the best way to put it. Whoever built this brush pile <laughs> and drug it into Lake Eufaula, done did some work. If it's from 25 feet of water all the way up in the water column, to call it eight feet of water, that's a big house for bass right there. Good stuff. Back out live on the water. Paul Nick on top. Walters. Jockamson. Finally, Carl Jockamson is out of the rain momentarily. Be some more showers passing that through. That was a massive, massive swing for Seth Fighter. Yeah, yeah. That was a good fish, man. Puts him back in the top for you. That, that, one, that one had it all. A couple more of those and he'll be looking just fine. Z would probably call it a survival swing. That was a survival swing right there. <laughs> Talking about Seth saying how hot it is, humid out there. And of course, that's, a, that's the way it's been the last couple of days down there. And it's been a front that's kind of moving that way. That's what's bringing some of these showers. It will be not quite as humid. Like they just the next three days or so.
talk about the importance of that fish. I know what this music means right here. Oh, in yes, case you sir. don't watch yes, the Bass Masters on ESPN2, well, this can only mean one thing, and it's the Power Pole Replay of the Day. I remember. Standard. Exactly right. I remember. And what we do is we build into energy, but this one right here, great shallow fish catch. We kind of waited for that for hours. Usually we have yes, sir. song and hymn throughout yes, a Power Pole Replay of the Day, and we might get there throughout the week. Hey, Seth Fighter, Ooh. you are, as of right now, he the he didn't rip my legs off. replay of the you day cast of, the week week Joe. of the year. Very well done. Thank you. Well, yeah, that's what we do. I mean, that's I don't know why in case you, you don't them. watch the Bass <laughs> Masters, <laughs> now you know. Now right. and now you know. Well, we got a new leader. What? Dollar Bill Low, one of the four-pounder. Wow. Wow. Fourth over four pounds. He's up to 20 pounds, four ounces, and then first place. Say that one's pretty close to four. Yes. Big one right there for Seth Fighter. Powerful replay of the day so far. A little air bump for all of us right there. Bill Lowen on top again, second man to pop the 20 pound barrier, according to Bass Track. Jake Whitaker, Clark Wendland, Drew Benton, Matt Heron, Garrett Paquette hanging in there. Matt Airy. Came up into the top 10 earlier, Cody Holland. Hey, Bill Bowen, we're gonna run down Bill Lowen. That's the job for our friend Davey Height when we come back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassbo, first U.S. Coast Guard approved Bassbo, first B-Hole pack design, largest owner's tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassbo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Got about an hour and a half of fishing time left on today. Day one coverage of the DeWalt Elite here on legendary Lake Eufaula. Going to do the same thing tomorrow, Thursday, as we have done today. Three-hour session in the morning, beginning at 8 Eastern time. Lay out for an hour, come back at noon, and bring you the last three hours of the day. Works pretty good. and. And it's worked well today. So much fun to be out there. Bill Lowen, we just learned right before we went to the break, Bill Lowen is our man on top of the leaderboard. The veteran is out there. And another veteran is in pursuit of him now. Uh -huh. And that is our friend, our colleague, the legend, Davey Hyde. 
Baby Height out there on Lake Eufaula with Bill Lowen. There's Bill Lowen, not too far from where we saw Carl Jockinson just a little bit ago. And let's see if we can uh, dial up Davey right now. Hey, Davey. Oh, it's great to be with you guys. You know, I've, I've been pretty fortunate today. I've been with Drew Cook, who was leading at one point, and uh, Garrett Paquette, who was leading at another point. So Bill Lowen just took over the lead, and ta-da, here you go with Bill Lowen. And he's obviously fishing very different from the other anglers we saw. He's fishing shallow, which is what he loves to do, pitching a half ounce lure parts jig, uh, his Bill Lowen signature jig, and he's just in his water willow fishing shallow and he just I just saw him catch a four pounder to help him almost a pound to put him a little over 21 pounds he told me I practice shallow I'm gonna stay shallow that's what I do and ironically I he's not very far from where I know Denny Brower uh, fished a, a few years back quite a few years back and won one of these big events here on Lake Eufaula uh, going against the grain but we talked about this a little bit earlier uh, you got to do what you feel comfortable doing and you've got to have confidence in what you're doing and and stick with it you can't go back and forth I don't think uh, you'll you'll miss the fish when they're offshore that it's a timing deal you got to really put your head down and grind with one thing and bill owen has definitely picked the right thing to grind with half ounce jig up here in the shallow vegetation davy real quick lo looking at bill lowen doing this we, we just got to see a really solid fish catch from seth fighter up shallow are you seeing a lot of guys now that the days kind of wore on coming shallower and the other question is you have so much history here winning history do you think a shallow bite could hold up for four days this time of year. Well, it, the, a couple of good things you mentioned there, Zona. Um, a lot of guys do seem to be moving shallow that were fishing out deeper early. The, the deep bite has been excellent the first two hours of, of daylight. The first couple hours of daylight has been on fire and then it kind of fades away and then it picks back up in the afternoon when they start generating water. But unfortunately, that's not until about the time the first flight has to start checking in. So we will see some of those guys, in my opinion, catch some good stringers. The, the ones that are in the later flights catch some in the last 45 minutes they have to fish. But your question about will this hold up, can this hold up? As long as the water level stays high, and it's, it's really surprising, as hard as they've been pulling this lake and they pull it down, you know, it'll drop six or eight inches from two o'clock until about midnight. And that's all, you know, this, this place is huge. That's a lot of water, but it just keeps filling right back up. If the water drops and stays down, then in my opinion, this is going to be done. These fish leave this stuff if it drops and stays down. But every night or every morning, it comes back up and these fish love to be in this shallow vegetation. We got some of it right here. I mean, it's just three or four feet of water in this stuff. And, and those fish, there's bluegill up here spawning. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things here for these fish to feed on, and they love being shallow. There's always a population of fish shallow on any lake I've ever been to, whether you're talking about smallmouth, largemouth, even some spotted bass. There's a, a certain population that loves to live shallow, but they will leave this stuff high and dry if this water falls and does not come back up. But it's been coming back up every single day for uh, a, a number of weeks here. It's just incredible the way it stayed up. And usually by this time of year, by mid or late May, the water just starts dropping more and more and does not come back up. But the lake has been filling back up, being basically over full pool uh, for, for multiple weeks. And these fish love to be shallow when it's like that. Davey, if, if in fact it turns out that that water level stays up, we're talking about will, will the bite hold up? Are there enough opportunities up and down the 85 miles of Lake Eufaula for these guys to, to find them? Or is it very localized? The good spots, are they very localized? Well, Bill just told me that he's just fishing now, just, just expanding on what he found in practice. He just caught that four pounder, said he somewhere that he didn't even plan on fishing today. So he's trying to expand his pattern. You see the guys doing that offshore, but what's unusual with this place and a lot of, a lot of the Tennessee river lakes, there's more pressure offshore this day and time than there is mm. on the bank. So really, you, I see people fishing the same brush piles over and over here on Lake Eufaula. I see them fishing the same ledges, but I have not seen many people even fishing shallow you see a few more people doing it this afternoon but over the, like you mentioned 85 miles that's a lot of shoreline six seven hundred miles of shoreline i think so there's a lot of this stuff and it will stay good and bill owen will be a factor come championship saturday this week if this lake keeps filling up great stuff thank great you stuff. very much davy thanks for hustling over there getting on our lead man you are you are you're picking him he's today. covered a lot of miles today he has covered, he's a, lot covered a lot of today. miles he's got a big gas bill today to turn in back to chris zaldane it's very interesting to hear that, that the, all of the pressure is out deep.
Yeah. And, and the bank is completely left alone. Because we haven't seen. I mean, it's been blowing every day. So when it gets calm like this, you got to break out the spinning rod and reel, which I'm okay with. It's 12:30, so we got a little less than two hours. I've been sampling a lot, you know. I just want to set myself up for the next three days. I don't want to have to rely on one spot, you know. So I'm just kind of going through them. I got one other spot that I feel real good about. I haven't, I haven't hit it yet. And then a lot of that stuff on the south end, those brush piles and things, if we could spend a little bit more time on them tomorrow, I feel like. All they need to do is find the bait. Get in the cup. One thing I really want to sample too is a punch bite. I did it a little bit in practice and had a few bites on it. Flipping, flipping mats. All right, let's go. One more cast and then we're going to move. Aldane continues to fine tune the uh, schedule for the rest of the day today. Earlier he said. This is that. like the prettiest rod and reel setup I've ever used. Like everything's gold and like smoke colored and then some camo colored line. Got to feel good about what you're doing, you know, and nothing looks or nothing feels better than looking good. <laughs> I guess. Off an Nothing, overlooked point there. Uh, you, when you combine it with the stash, I, yeah. hang on, you ready? Bullseye, my yeah, friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, overlooked, yes. but so true. <laughs> That's right. The stash, man. It's been, uh, I need to trim it a little bit. Uh, it's no fighter mustache, that's for sure. It's no Lintner mustache. It's pretty scraggly. Trait still hates it, but I think she's coming around a little bit. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of it for the rest of my life. I'm not going to lie to you. It kind of, I feel like it belongs on my face. <laughs> it's my thinking mustache. I'm always thinking about my next move and I'll just play with it. You know, do that. Helps me make the right decisions. Here's a fishing tip you may want. We to try. are hitting a new level. Yeah. Uh, on day one of a of an event, really. Usually it doesn't come into play till day three or day four. Coming back, man. <laughs> it's, it's okay though. All right, let's get him. If Walters didn't shave his mustache during the break, they would have had uh, Polinic Fighter Zaldane and Walters with. Some unique mustaches. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at, at Bass Track on Bassmaster.com, and I don't know if this is a typo, but we always look at guys that have caught numbers and numbers and numbers. Brandon of bass. Lester. I'm going to start with Bill Lowen. Bill Lowen's caught some of the biggest numbers, being 13 bass all day long. Clark Wendelin up to 18. Well, you just said the, Brandon Lester is at 43 bass to get to his five bass limit. He's well, no, catching a lot of one and a half pounders and, and right. small, no help. That's when those fish are supposed to bite it. <laughs> 43, I don't know if I've seen that, that, through that big pile. a figure ever in, in a day, a full day. Brandon Cobb, last year a two time event winner, is in eighth place now with 18 and a quarter. I'll work on that for you, Z. Try to get you a visual to show off his 43 bass. Wow, oh, that's astounding. I mean, if it's anything like an offshore beatdown that Lester put on at Gunnersville in 2019, where he caught probably Come 30 on. to 40 right, bass, you know, like 
he's done it before, so I wouldn't be yes. surprised. Yep. Probably going to just barely catch the tail end of that afternoon bite. In the boat with our leader, Z. Yes. How many, as a percentage of the full field of, of 86, how many do you think took the bill low on route and said, look, I'm just not even going to deal with the distractions of, of deep. I'm just going to fish shallow this whole tournament. Oh, uh, man, probably 10%. 10, 10 to 20%, okay. 20 at most. But one of the things that's, that's really interesting, I'll put this out right now, we talked about it earlier, is we, there's a lot of factors that 99% that of the tournaments this, this time of year, if you're on a, a normal year, are one out deep. But the combinations of we talk, Davey talked about the high water, that massive mayfly hatch that you talked about last week that was here. I mean, I have pictures of the may. Oh, real quick, Brandon Polony. Little guy. That's what we've been plagued with today. With a full Bunch moon. Okay, so you have bluegills coming in to feed on mayflies and everything else that comes in to feed on a hatch. The other thing is. You're also going to have a bluegill spawn going on right now and also throughout the country. Um, it, and this is no joke. The, one of the, the best locals on this lake, Joe Durham, made a comment. He said, if there's anything that can screw up the offshore bite on this lake, it is high water and it's a mayfly hatch. And that is, actual, that is absolutely what happened here last week. Well, it remains to be seen if that's going to be the uh, final decider of what happens in this tournament. The Walt Bassmaster Elite, second stop of the regular season for the I Bassmaster I still think Elite some Series. of the deep water guys will have something to say about that. Okay. But come Saturday. You were pretty pretty firm on that. You have been all day long. We, we give you consistency points for that, Z. Bill Lowen, our shallow water guy, though, on top for the time being. Kyle Monty, it'd be interesting to see what Kyle is doing. Well, he's proving kind of hard to find right now. Jake Whitaker, Clark Wenland and all the rest in the top 10. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grave line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information and it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait, fish bite, and won't let go.
You're watching the world's best basketball league at Lake Eufaula. Being brought to you live by Mincota. Get into the final hour and a half, certainly, of fishing for this uh, DeWalt Bassmaster Elite on Lake Eufaula. Hey, let's look forward to 2021 in the World Championship. It will be held on Lake Ray Roberts. Just north and east a little bit of Fort Worth. Fort Worth will be our fantastic host city. Brand new Dickies Arena, their state-of-the-art arena. It is going to be a spectacle, that is for sure. Great folks, big bass fishing population in that part of the country. Uh, we'd love for you to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a bucket list thing. First time ever in Fort Worth for the Bassmaster Classic. It'll be a huge, huge event. Of course, the World Championship will be decided there in March. And Ronnie, more knowledge, please. Uh, you, 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 I teased it up going into the commercial break about having Brandon Lester's locations. And as you can see across Lake Eufaula, takeoff is about above the monitor. So just down from takeoff, mid lake to the bottom of the lake is where Brandon Lester's lived. And as you look, it looks like, oh, maybe he's only caught five, six, seven, eight fish. No, those are his five, six, seven, eight brush piles. And on each brush pile, for instance, this one, we will break down that he has caught I mean, 15, 20 fish wow. off that specific oh brush pile, and you hop across, I believe, over to the Petula region. Uh, we've seen some anglers in that area. Caught another, you know, five to 10 at least off that brush pile. So Brandon Lester has been doing that rotation of maybe 10 spots and every time he gets there, he's catching three to five fish off each of them, which makes sense why he's caught 40 something fish today. So Lester's one that'll be one to watch, but a lot of these brush piles have had a pound and three quarter, two pound, one pound. They're all kind of the same size class. And then you get down to this one and there's a five, a three and a half, a three. So it might be certain brush piles have certain quality fish and some of them might just be his uh, fill a limit spot or a desperation heave, but they definitely seem to be spread out by size as well as region of the lake. Excellent. Boy, that's what you need to get over on this tournament. A couple of platinum level brush piles would certainly go a long way for, for any of these anglers. Basically sure. doubled numbers of any other angler in the entire field. Yeah. Back to our leader, Bill Lowen. Oh, Over yes. Ohio now making his home in Indiana. Big Ohio River guy. You always look at Bill as a favorite when we get into a river environment, a shallow water environment. Those are his specialties. Three fish in the boat over four pounds. Wow. One just, just ounces shy of four pounds. Thought it was interesting listening to Davy Height. Davy with so much history on this lake. Emphatically making the statement he will be a factor come Saturday. Caught his smallest fish right at takeoff, 6.03 a.m. Mm. And it was three hours later before he started catching. And then caught him one at the 9 o'clock, the 10 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, and the 12 o'clock hour. We need to be around that 20 pound mark. And now we can do it, it can happen quick. I think I might clean my boat this afternoon. <laughs> Get some more room. We're live. Still out here fishing brush. We're working our way up back towards Kelwicky. We're still south of the bridge, but the wind's picked up a little bit. We've got some good color to the water. 
We just need a good fish now to make things happen. If we can get one more good bite, we'll be where we need to be for at least day one. That heron hanging in there in the top five, getting the job done today, obviously. Still going to go with, we're going to be on the top six tomorrow. You're going to need 20 pounds okay. to, have a, to, to have a camera tomorrow, I think, by the time weigh-in comes. The big head shakes. I don't think he'll help me, but I still want to. He might. They're sitting right there. You just can't get the fuckers to buy. Excuse me, Frank. Looking pretty bleak this morning with his performance. Wasn't too optimistic, but he's turned it around with three crucial catch. This one and uh, that crankbait fish. Yeah, the crank, then, the yeah, one he cranked up right before we left for. Yep. Yeah. It's got a pretty solid stringer right there. I think one of the good dynamic, very solid dynamic that we're going to see going into the final or today too is. We're going to see a mix of shallow guys versus deep guys tomorrow, for sure. Oh, whoa, whoa. what do we have here? Hey, first look yeah. at the two-time angler of the year. year. Gerald Swindle in action there. Look at those great, great victories. Hard fought angler yes. of the year titles, to be sure. Right here, the first one in 2004 was an absolute battle going down the final day as well as this one right here finished up at mill axe in minnesota and that was a trying trying event for gerald swindle taking the title final day of the season yeah it was not a done deal until it here was we go. finally done and there he is himself gerald swindle gee thanks for letting us intrude for a minute kind of assess your day for us if you don't mind well, it's been like riding a tricycle down a gravel road on a steep incline wearing nothing but chapstick and wrecking. Huh? <laughs> okay. Copy that. Got it. Copy that. Come on. Uh, I, dude, I caught, I caught several fish, and I've just I've jumped off three big fish today, and I, I lost one about six pounds this morning right at the boat trying to lift it. It's just been one of them days where it hasn't clicked yet. I mean, we're scratching it out. We're sitting here catching it right now, hopping a little Zoom medium brush hog on a half ounce little Buckeye jig head. It's kind of hopping it around out here, and I can see them on 360. We've caught eight or ten right here. We're not, we're not that far out from the ramp, but just, you know, you have some of them days where there's no explanation, you know. You get a big one on a crankbait, and the first jump comes off, and then I just tell Jack, I'm like, I, I got no explanation. I knew I needed 20 pounds a day. So now I'm in that mode of not trying to get in position to win today, just trying to stay out of position of losing. So I'm trying to scratch and claw to try to get to that 15 or 16 mark where you can make a move. There he is. You know, you fall That's ahead. him. That's a 10. Oh, hey. That's a big one. That's me talking. Oh, there he is. No, get on. It felt good, though. I heard me talking on there about a 10, and then I broke up. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Got me fired up. Excuse me while I talk to you again. That was his, well, G has yeah, provided, and we just saw a couple one. of them as wins in, in Angler of the Year. And another memorable moment came back in 2007. Let's take you to Clear Lake, California. This is the record set. <laughs> Absolutely. One of the best catches in Bassmaster history right here with Gerald Swindle. 
There he is. That's him. That's a 10. Oh my God, come on, G. Get her back up. Come on, G string. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! You want him, baby! I got him! Woo! Yes! Yes! Woo! Look at the size of that fish! Oh my God! Yes! Give it here, dude! Don't worry about the damn show! Oh my God, what a bass. Oh my God, what a bass. Oh my God, what a bass, dude. Check out the size of that thing. Go! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Boy, that is one of the killer, <laughs> killer catches of all time, <laughs> for sure. Two time angler of the year. Gerald Swindle back out with Gerald. Got a little bit of a connection with him here. I'm going to watch him for a moment or two more. Well, we're going we're gonna to let him go. We're going to let him get about his business. I've got, uh, I'm going to steal Sucha's Thunder and give oh. you a BFA. Uh oh, oh no, you are. Stetson Blaylock with a major call. I'm trying to get the number on it, the weight. Uh, it looks close to be a five and a half, six pounder, but it might have been put in as a heavy four. But it, it is a giant call for our runner up in Angler of the Year. You're going to get it inside the cut with that. Maybe. How about Caleb Summerall? He just caught a five pounder. He's up to 18 pounds, even three way tie for ninth yeah, just, right at the cut line. Just trying to get a bite is tough, and like that midday is really, really brutal. Without them pulling any water, I mean, it's. I mean, we're at a choke point here where. Not choke point, that's not a good word or term to use right now. We're at a little hourglass shape here. And there should be current ripping through here, but it's not. Obviously, we've got a little breeze kicking up right there. Maybe some weather on the way. Might, might be able to dodge it as well, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Get Sal Dane there to work out his plans for the rest of the day. Bill Lowen, we just got to visit with Bill. Got a good idea, especially from Davey Hyde, about what he's doing and what his philosophy is for this whole approach to this tournament here. Shallow, going shallow. Those weights right there being that tight is exactly what we wanted to see on day number one. More of that coming your way. We'll take a break. Be right back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series. I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. AFCO, any fish, any water. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. 
the legendary Ranger Z series. Unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. The DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. Don't forget today at 7 Eastern, for Pacific time, we'll have the first round of the Major League Baseball Draft. That's on ESPN, rounds two through five. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN2, that starts five Eastern, two Pacific, only five rounds this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Carl Ravitch hosting from Bristol alongside MLB insider Kylie McDaniel. Remote contributions from Jess Burke, Jess, Chris Burke, Jess Mendoza, Eduardo Perez, Cal Peterson, and Jeff Passan. All rounds available on the ESPN app in the first round also to be available for you on ESPN Deportes. Certainly look forward to that. Look forward to the final hour or so of fishing we're going to be able to bring you today on Bassmaster Live as we uh, sort of reboot, restart the 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series. We've got seven more regular season events, including this one. And it's been a good, tight, competitive tournament. Started out with really the, the the first couple of hours were gangbusters. No Absolutely, doubt about that. we started to see it spike a little bit from the dam, the bottom of Lake Eufaula as we move up towards the town of Eufaula. Really, the majority of the field that at least we've been with today has been away from the bank. We've seen guys keeping it honest later in the day. But really, going into tomorrow, if you got to hang with us early today on ESPN two. Like you said, the first two hours, and, and we were we were well aware, cameras rolling immediately on the water because most of the, the flurries, catching three, four, five within 20 minutes, it happened earlier today. Look for that exact same thing to happen tomorrow. The one thing I will tell you going into tomorrow, um, looking at the names that are at the top of the leaderboard, we're gonna see really how diverse this lake is. We're going to see guys that are fishing a foot of water out to 30 feet of water and really that's the best kind of tournament where guys are doing different things. We always, always like the diversity when we see six different guys doing six different things at any given time and that's it. You're right. We've got the full promise of that happening for us tomorrow on Friday and on Saturday. Four days of coverage. Bassmaster Live, the first time the Elite Series has ever visited legendary Lake Eufaula. It certainly has been a treat. Thank you so much for being with us today. And as we say, it's going to be the same thing tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll start with the first half of our coverage. After that, we'll be back at noon. Six hours tomorrow, ESPN2. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system.
standard on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Oh, we're back with another full hour of coverage, Bassmaster Live for you, Lake Eufaula. What a treat to go to this legendary place. You think of all those pictures from back in the day that, that really got the country excited about the possibilities of bass fishing. What are the possibilities for these 86 anglers today? Well, you want to do good, but it's not going to be official until they put it in the books. The weigh-in happens right here on Bassmaster.com. Our guy, Dave Mercer. Dave Mercer Wait. there. He's in charge. Absolutely. He will be totally in charge at 3 p.m. Eastern time. When he all kicks it off, see who does well today. Of course, all of our hopefuls will have another day to kind of tune up their score, sharpen things up a little bit tomorrow. The main thing, though, job one is making that 40 cut. Be in the top 40 tomorrow so you can fish on Friday. And, of course, hopefully make it the top 10 who fish on championship Saturday. Another opportunity to get us. Let's go up the river, up the river for uh, the man farthest up the river for quite some time has been Brock Mosley. And we have caught up with him. And, Brock, can we... If we could interrupt you for just a moment to tell us, uh, you could tell us why you chose this area to fish and uh, how the results have been in the last few hours. Uh, you know, I, I came up here in pre-practice and uh, I spent two days up here forever and I caught a bunch of fish. And, uh, you know, the quality's not the way it is on the lake, but, you know, there's a lot of three to four pounders up here. And I, it was weighing on my mind, uh, the whole off month because uh, of what to do. I knew this going to get one offshore, and I'm not afraid to fish offshore. But um, I came here month, uh, the first day of practice and came up here, and I seen five boats all day long. So um, I had a decent first day of practice. It, wasn't, it was probably my worst day of practice, but I still had a decent day. Um, so I came back the second morning before going to idle all day and uh within the first hour or two i caught two or three four pounders so i decided to stay all day and uh been one of them deals every time i come up here just to look around on days i decide to idle i end up staying all day so you know it's uh, a lot of fish up here it's just you know it's, it's hard to run into that fiber six pound bite that I need uh, but I figured I could come up here and uh, make maybe make a, chance, a run at making the top 10 but I need a couple more four pounders by the end of the day to, to have a run at that um, I know I'm not going to win and uh, but you know when you do this for a living it's all about making cuts and getting points and getting getting checked so that was the main goal this week and, you know like I said I'm just I'm two or three, two bites away from, you know, having a really good stringer for up here. It's just you got to cover a lot of water and go through a lot of fish to get those bites. Brock, can you kind of walk us through how you've caught them throughout the day? Has it, we see you flipping right now, but have you had to mix it up a little bit? Um, you know, I caught, I uh, spent the first half of the day covering a lot of water with a bug bait. Um, Cause that's that's how I would find these sweet spots in the river during practice was uh, covering water with a buzz bait all day, and uh, I would just mark the stretches of the river where I have multiple bites. And uh, I got a couple good bites on it this morning, and then uh, you know the buzz bait bite hadn't been good today at all, really. And then uh, once the sun come out after the last rain shower, you know. This, put them fish under the cover like I, I, I wanted them. And uh, like I said, the last 
two hours for me has been by far the best of the day. Um, I just haven't. I've been catching a lot of two and a half, two and three quarter, and you know I need I need some more four pounders to to put myself where I want to be. Well, Brock, best of luck on finding those uh, those two more bites you say you need to, to really feel good about your day here. Thanks for spending some time with us, and we'll hope to see it way in time. We will see it way in time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Brock Mosley, the farthest up the Chattahoochee River. Now I'm seeing Chris grow and Tyler Rivette a little bit north of him now. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, on the All map. Right. Well, maybe he's moved, Brock, or... Eighty-five miles again, but it's just the mileage on the been river. Been brutal for us this afternoon. Been brutal. You know, we talk to Gerald Swindle, we leave him, and then at uh, 105, he catches a four-pounder and climbs into our top 20. Wow. There you go. Wow, wow. Sweet BFA. Okay. Such, how many do we have unofficially over five pounds today? I'm over uh, about 43 or four uh, right in there. Are we really? Yeah. Wow. Over four. Four, over four, over, I, I said over five. Or more than ten. <laughs> That's for sure. Let me add them up, just a few more. And it looks like also of our 86 anglers fishing today, like we said, Yusuke Miyazaki not in this event because he could not make it back from the quarantine deal in Japan. Uh, and then Mark Menendez with yes. his bulging or ruptured discs, we're not sure quite, yes. but he had to pull himself out yesterday from the event. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six anglers unaccounted for on bass track, but everyone Got else it. has logged fish, so. Okay. And those six are definitely not zeros, they are marshal lists. There'll be a few surprises come way in time. Again, that's happening starting at three o'clock on Bassmaster.com. Talking to a lot of the guys that, you know, we were talking when we were on ESPN2 today, they do real well on this lake. Guys like Joe Durham, Scott Gilly, fish a lot of local tournaments. They made a comment that right now there are so many three to four pound fish in the lake, good number of four to fives, um, but not quite as many six and a half to eight pound fish as they, you know, right when they lost the hydrilla a year ago. I mean, some of the stringers last year out here were astronomical. Near 30 pounds. Yes, and and consistently uh, around 30 pounds. Now, I, I don't want to sound the wrong way. Well, how this is going to really set up by the end of Saturday is with, with so many fish in the same size class, year class, uh, the, I mean, this will be a horse race going into the weekend just because I don't know I, I don't know that we're going to see a, a, a 24 to 26 pound bag mm, where, where somebody can get a, you yeah. know what I mean where somebody can get that separation a bit more wind than there was all day, the first five hours of fishing. Will not be from a lack of effort. Dane hanging 
top 15 or 16 spots for the past couple hours here. Only three, three pounds back of the leader. He can make another significant call today. He'll be right there in the thick of it. Could put himself in the back in the top six to start tomorrow. You know, this is this was one of those really, really tricky tournaments practicing for listening to Brock Mosley um, and then listening to guys like Seth Fighter or Brandon Polinick, David Mullins that just idled and idled and idled. It, it's it where where you could really get in trouble in, in a practice situation for a tournament like this is just entirely trying to do too much. All right, I'm going to go graph out in 10 to 20 feet of water. All right, I'm going to go throw a swim jig up in shore grass. Okay, I'm going to go frog now. Let me go crank a ledge. You, this is one of those really tricky tournaments that you could try to do too much in practice to where you're not committing enough time to one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you think, again, some guy who's got 50 pi brush piles marked, and then you, you, you put your boat in the water on the first day and you go, uh... What do I do? And yeah. not only that, you know, the, is it, it gets from from talking from talking to a lot from talking to a lot of the guys that really idled offshore. Okay, quick move. It was the, there was two a quarter mile. There's so much brush out there. It's almost like, gosh, I have to fish some of it to know what yeah. is good because there's so much of it. Our first look at Gary Klaus. There he is. Boy, it's odd seeing Gary Klaus offshore. <laughs> it's a little it bit. Really, it really is. you think of him as being a he is a warmer, master though. flipper. A he warmer, is. yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, if there's a if there's a swim jig bite, that guy will find it. <laughs> Got to go see his man cave right there near it the Phoenix. It looked like plant. a dandy. It was it was pretty unique and it was oh, right there so where many, the factory is. Yeah, the plant? yeah, okay. it's not far from the factory. A lot of historical things in there too. He had some original cream worms and some other things as well. You can see that gallery on Bassmaster.com. Gary Klaus's man cave. It looked very clean. It was very clean. Oh, I, he texted me two photos of additions to his man cave that weren't there when I got there. And one was like a brand new sports car and another one was like a workout machine during COVID. Yes. Uh, and uh, I was impressed. Now, if I wasn't supposed to say that, I'll, I'll know about it later. Uh, but yeah, that's right. Totally. <laughs> that's some character to the story. Yeah, that is the one thing I noticed. It's very, like, very surgically clean. He made me take my boots off outside. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Exactly where he is. A lot of traffic in the area. We'll say that. Here we go. Ooh. Got to see him at Cayuga last year. Throw a swim jig, some, and flip some of that grass. Day That's right. one. That's right. Is that where that was? Was yeah. it Cayuga? If it wasn't, no one will know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. House's bass track hasn't uh, pinged since 8.08 a.m. when he had 15 in uh, change. Wow. In live. So he's fallen. Remember, he was in our top five, I thought, for a while there. Now he's fallen to 32nd, but he might call. Uh-oh.
Ah, uh, he ain't gonna help me, I know. Nah. Sure felt good to get a bite, though. That's something I'm gonna wipe it, boy. Pawn it cooked up? Nope. Ain't not that big. Shook one off in that brush pile yesterday. <laughs> but he's not gonna help the cause. He's just not gonna help the cause. Z, a question for you. We were talking about guys fishing offshore sure. and then going up to the shallows. Uh, for the guys who fish primarily shallow today, if they get to that 18, 19, 20 pound mark, they use the rest of the day not to look for to one eat. big bite. They go look for a graph spot, you know, a place that they can go find an offshore spot. I, I thought it was pretty telling, listen to what Davey said, that Bill Owen left his primary shallow area to go investigate totally new shallow areas. So. Well, Bill Lowen still on top. Kyle Monty hanging in there. Second place, Cody Holland in that tie for ninth place with Matt Airy. Brandon Cobb, new face in the top ten. Heron hanging in there. Benton, Wendland, Whitaker. Got more fishing. We got another half hour's fishing worth for you today on our way to the weigh-in time, which is again coming up at 3 o'clock, and we'll be back with more on Bassmaster Live. Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassmo, first US Coast Guard approved Bassmo, first Beehole Pad Design, largest owners tournament, great fish and win program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassmo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So, yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. The last 30, 40 minutes of action here on Lake Eufaula on day one. DeWalt Bassmaster Elite. we get the same deal for you tomorrow. We come on the air at 8 Eastern time, three hours of coverage all the way up to 11 a.m. We set back for uh, 
about an hour. Pick it up at noon again, take you all yeah. the way to 3 o'clock. It's going to be know, a good deal. I made a comment to somebody while we were breaking. DeWalt makes some of the best power tools on Earth. Always have. And here's why I say yeah. that. I am not allowed to touch tools at my house. Why would that be? Because I'm not good with them. Okay. I'm really right. bad with them. Okay. And All DeWalt, right. I literally, are the only ones I'm actually capable of using. Oh, that's there's, it's true. There's, there's true. a left-handed endorsement well, right there, it, if ever I heard one. It, 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 they are capable of making me feel like I know what I'm doing. It yes. says a lot. It, it says does. a lot. That, that could be the new slogan, but possibly <laughs> not. So we get back out to Matt Heron, the uh, caught one. Oh, just under a keeper a little bit ago, he said, man, it felt good to just get my line stretched. Maybe get something going here. He's by and large gotten the job done today. He has, no doubt. This is really aggravating. I don't even need weight. Walters. That one might go. Skinny fish from Patrick Walters. Walters is getting close. It takes about 14-11 to get in top, inside the top 40 right now. 14-11. He's sitting there at heavy 12, not counting his pole. I think Patrick yeah, is a really game. light guesser, too. Oh, for sure. He likes playing the game. Yeah. Yeah. Bing bong. Yep. Doing his fish care right now. Based on the flaps per minute on Seth Fighter's pants, the wind is headed straight down Did the pipe. I see that young Patrick Wal- uh oh. Oh my. I thought for sure I was a fish. Come out of that brush. I guess I should have picked up the spinning pole, dude. I don't know how big he is yet. That's what you get when you throw a spinning pole. Did I see that young Patrick Walters, Ron, went to like Saskatoon or Iceland for his honeymoon? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Which way one up was it? There's kind of a difference there. Right? Up in Canada. I don't for know. Sure. I, it was, I just. It looked gorgeous. It did. But incredibly cold. <laughs> Very cold. Yep. Yep. Big one. Be a big one. Stay on. Be a good one. Be a big one. They open their mouth up and they feel big. It's, it's a big one. It's a good one. We need this one. 
We need this one. We need this one bad. It's not a huge one, but I'll definitely take it. I just hooked. Come here, son. Yes. We're getting somewhere now. Good one. I think one is the small guy. to do some colour here in a second. Should have done it to start with. Too similar. Just get under there. It's like the whole lake just turned on fire. Yeah. In the last nine minutes. It did. John Cox jumped up for the 311. You know the shallow bite's not great when John Cox spent three yep. quarters of his practice yes. graphing. Yes. That was that was a shock to me. Said he let down all of his shallow shallow bros. Did he really graph that much during practice? I believe so. That what stuns he me. Feels little. It was really little. 11.45. Probably he's bigger shallow. than what he wow. felt, but <laughs> he's not very big. Hooked up. So I think yes, we weren't hooked up with Skype. That was Davy's camera. Lady Ashley was with Klaus. Okay. Because right, right before, not now, but before. Yeah. No, I, yeah, no, I no think, now. I think both. Yeah, I think both. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, both. yeah. yeah. But I think that Gary put his bass track fish in, which explains why they haven't pinged since nine o'clock this morning, because that he probably put his first limit in of 15 pounds and then did not touch it since. So that would make sense. Really? A lot of green on bass track. Bernie yeah. Schultz, Caleb Cuphall, Brian Schmidt, Keith Combs all right at Should be able to still run place. pretty good speed, but you missed it. Catch a nice fish. There's going to be a lot of 15 pound Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Lots. During the COVID break, get our way we back up closer to the ramp. Caleb Cooper. Oh. Yeah. Work our way up that way. <laughs> Should have time to stop, fish another place. Davey just confirmed that. Klaus's first limit was 15 pounds and that's why it hasn't pinged since. Uh, what are you thinking here, Kevin? I'm thinking we really need one more coal. We need a good four or five pound fish. Um, I think we're right on the verge. We're on the crisp of it, but it's been a decent day. We've caught some fish today. We just haven't got a lot of size for some reason. Um, I think we're just dialing in a pattern. We haven't got to the, what I believe to be my better area or the area I like more until late this afternoon. We're getting a couple bites. So mainly today's the day to, to figure them out and make a game plan for tomorrow. We've got to survive today, but uh, 
I gotta hit a bunch more piles in the next 45 minutes because we're running out of time and we need one more good fish. But I think the majority of the fish are on the shallower piles. I think those are kinda prevailing. No, we haven't better. had for quite a long time. What's that? Uh, it's been trivia. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Suit, maybe? Some trivia? Or Eric, I'll, 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 I'll read it. Whoa. I'll read it. Here we go. How much did the largest bass ever caught in Lake Eufaula weigh? Okay. 14, 15, 15, 14, 16, 8, or 16, 15. Not think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Bring your little reindeer games, after though. The break? Yeah, well, after the break. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll answer it after the break again. Yeah. Was it a 16 or a 14 pounder? We'll be back after the break to tell. This the DeWald Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mincota. Enjoying so much the live bass fishing today as we uh, get started again with the 2020 Bassmaster Elite season. Hey, the bass trivia question, pretty basic. If you're a Lake Eufaula fan, big bass fan, what's the record here? Is it 14-15? 15, 14, 16, 8, or 16, 15, Z? If this is the bass and capital of, of the week of the planet, sure, I'm gonna go with 16, 15, because I think I'm on your reindeer game, Sue. Are okay. you? I All think right. so. Ronnie. I don't know. I'm gonna go 16, 8. I'm gonna undercut you. I'll say 16, 8. I'll go with you on that as well. Let's see what that answer is right now. Oh, it Let's is 16 go. eight. Oh, my goodness. Such, you are <laughs> he just as digs. elusive hey, as you an want Arkansas to say mongoose. He is like a snow. <laughs> you are an Arkansas mongoose. See, John Giles, hey, what year? Yes. 1980. March huh. of 1980. See, Z, though, you don't Google ties it. ties the state record, 16 no, eight, the I official don't. Mountain, Mountain View Lake in Shelby County. You don't Google it though, Z, like Davy does. Davy gets all of them right from Googling. Oh, I know. I'm on it. 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 That's an indictment on Davy Height right there, Ron. I know and he's, that he's listening, listening. Yes. somewhere. Oh, 100%. Oh, ah. He's saying he'll, he'll play to win. I'm going to get a win. text in seven oh. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Wind's starting to howl there. There's a few storms in the area, little cells 
bouncing around. The border between Alabama and Georgia. What do you think the leading weight will be today, Z? I go 21 8. Really? Yeah. Yep. Does that surprise you, Ron? I think it'll be I think it'll almost be 23. Wow. I think I, there's going to be a guy that I, I think there's going to be a guy Kyle Monty's putting in his own fish. He's at 20 pounds. Whitaker's at 20 pounds, and he is like a Blaylock and a Walters. They they underguess if they if they don't weigh him. You know, I said John Cox just moved into 19th place. Well, Keith Combs caught a 3-5 and a 3-8 within two minutes, and he's up to 16, almost 17 pounds in 19th place. Still moving around. Marcel Dane still moving around. Said he was going to go go back deep for the last hour of fishing, but that has not played out that way. Certainly gave us some good footage oh, this did. morning for yes, sure. Yes, he did. Super <laughs> weird to feel like he's had a fantastic day, but he had a fantastic hour, and he's now 16th place. Would like, like to, I would have loved to have seen if he would have pressed that spot a little bit. <laughs> and caught 43 off yes. of there like less. <laughs> Pressure luck. I'm going to call him Professor Zaldane for the schooling he was giving everybody this morning. And we didn't even see him get to, we didn't even see him throw a worm or, or much like no. that on that spot. Mm, we saw right. just swim bait, yeah. spoon, nothing. If yeah. you sit there and we do some baits. Big artillery. I think we scared Brandon Lester off, by the way, Z. He hasn't caught a fish since we mentioned that's he caught That's what we do here. You know, oh, no, we do that's, no, He's either that's finally laying, happened. he's finally laying off his stuff, or we, we put the kiss of death on him. Yep. Here, cut and all. The four pounder to get inside our cut, tying Carl Jacobson at 39th. And the cut we keep referring to is tomorrow's cut, of course. That's after the tomorrow, yes. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Just for clarity. Well, a lot of those guys, you know what they do after today. They look where's 40th and they figure out double the weight, add or subtract a pound, and that's what they shoot for tomorrow. I got to have this to make the cut. Ronnie, I know you like to get inside info for our friends on Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Did, did Jake Whitaker feel like he was in good shape coming into the tournament? He, he said he could catch he could catch fish. He just didn't know how big they'd end okay. up being. Yeah. But he was he said, hey, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not uh, my favorite way of fishing is not offshore. So I'm going to do what I know how to do. And that's why he's caught 10 bass today for 30 pounds with, you know, his limit right. being 20. Right. So he's doing what he can do up shallow. I think I saw a blog photo, you know, that might have a frog in it. So that's kind of his, where he got, you know, he got fifth at the Sabina a few years ago on a frog. It makes sense. This month, actually, a couple years ago. Pee in real quick. All right. So, Ronnie, you admit to insider trading on fantasy fishing. Is that what you're saying? Oh, I used to be guilty as charged on that. No, see what I, I did. Didn't play. Back in the member, I back in the oh, day. Oh yes, okay, so I, I don't think I would, you entered. Doing fierce would, battle with would, myself and I Jerry McKinnis. That was, yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. So, Such, I will, I will let you know. I select my team at least a week before the event and don't change it, no matter what I hear. And it normally works out better than if I hear because you've heard all before. It. I yes. change it once I see, you know, their their guesstimate weights, and then I, I always regret that. Nope. Yep. I always. When I was at the events, I would somebody would be like, "Dude, I'm really confident." I'd be like, "Awesome," and then they wouldn't catch crap, and I'd be like, "Okay, that's great." <laughs> see, young Ron, before you worked here, you were actually allowed to set your lineup two or three hours into the first day of competition. And if we would have, I don't know, say, a James Overstreet out on the water, they'd be like, man, I'm telling you, Brian Snowden's done whacking him. You watch 
how fast he was on a team. Uh-huh. Well, see, but it still didn't help you, Z. I used to watch those shows, and Jerry would still smoke you in that all those fantasy fishing. absolutely untrue. I'm just kidding. Wait absolutely a untrue. <laughs> Partially. No. <laughs> and, uh, that, was, that was before <laughs> I knew how to cheat. <laughs> <is when> I, <laughs> that's, that's the part I'm talking about. Tell me with the partially. <laughs> I said it wouldn't uh, be over 10 mile an hour winds today. Nice. I'd say that's bumping right up there on 10 miles an hour where Carl is. Our winds are supposed to go down throughout the event, though, Not correct? So, yeah. 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 And there's a difference. Everything's it's supposed a, to calm down. This storm is front's going to pass. And, uh, it's a difference of being 10 and you're near the dam compared to 10 and it's building all the whole right. lake to get up to where Carl's at. First look at Bernie Schultz. Been having a good day today. Really solid day. Yeah. What's that? Good ones early in the morning and then right around noon. Caught three much better ones. Nineteen must be the magic number. Four pounder for Caleb Coop Hall. He's tied with Todd Otten and uh, Ito. God, Taco stay. Ito. Oh no 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 no. No, stay on there. Oh, it's a big one. No, 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 no. No, stay on there. Oh, gosh, did it come off? Yeah! And I broke my rod. Woo! High sticking penalty. Got a high sticking penalty right there, baby. Yeah! What? Yes! Yes! What an upgrade. Ah, ha, ha. Ah. Yes, sir. That's a good upgrade, man. Looks like the skinny one goes. Yes! Oh, no, no, no. Dude, that was insane. Gosh, dang it. Got another freaking dead one. I gotta go. Son of a gun, man. That's not good, dude. Oh, man. That is not good at all. Dude. Oh, come on, girl, breathe. I don't think so. Oh, son of a... Dang it. Well, I'm going to tell you what that leads us to right there, Tommy. I think I know what you're talking about. Exactly right. I'm not really sure where we're headed right here, but I know what it is, my friend. I think he's brought it all day long, all the way up to that Ooh, last second. We are back. Chris Zaldane, strong, oh, strong morning here on Lake Eufaula. Off shore, beat down for the first 45 minutes. All I heard. Welcome back, baby. Quarantine is over, and we're catching giants out here on Lake Eufaula. Chris Eufala. Aldane. Chris Aldane. Fastmaster Live. Big ESPN fish alerts popping. I see Pop, you. Flare and sizzle because yep. we're back. And look, it took a little bit of time for us to get our own traction, but we got it. Ronnie, you, no, I'm no, not no, scared no. for just no, a little bit of it. Oh. But this right here, <laughs> this right here. Oh my heavens, Chris Alde, oh, you are gosh, the power pole replay yeah. of the entire day on that back. fish catch. Woo. Chris Alde. High sticking penalty. Got a high sticking penalty right there, baby. Yeah. You are the power pole replay of it. <laughs> I was wondering it was, if there, it was disjointed, but it worked. Hey, I was starting to wonder if there's any water in that place. I, I couldn't see. It didn't look like there's anything back there. And he had a two pounder as a small fish, so if that's over four and a quarter, five and a quarter, he's. Time for the lead. 
Wow. Boy, you imagine when that one, uh, that one may put Chris back in the top 10. It'll get him close at any rate. Bill Lowen still on top of that leaderboard right now. We'll be back with the final bit of fishing on Bassmaster. On Bassmaster Live, Live. Tommy. Yeah. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minn Kota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Saber FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. If you want to know how the best anglers always seem to find fish, stay on fish, and be in the right place at the right time, don't ask them. Just look at the name on the side of their boat. The one that's built 10 million motors, shallow water anchors, and more. No angler's gonna tell you their secrets, but they don't have to, because you already know. Minn Kota, fish for more. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Just a little bit of fishing time left here on Bassmaster Live before we uh, get ready to go to the way in our next event. In about a month's time, we're headed to the Finger Lakes region, New York State, Hyuga Lake. Think Arguably the best fishing lake of the Finger Lakes. Think I'm going to head to that one. All right, so, good deal. You're going to do back to back to back up there? No, with us? I'm going to go back to back, I think. And then uh, back to bed. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Was that offhanded humor right there, my friend? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nice. Bill Owen still on. Hey, look at this. I mean, if you want Wiley veterans, we got Bill Lowen, Clark Wendland in there, Drew Benton. Oh, you're not in there. Yeah, and some and some relatively yes. new faces in yes. Kyle Monty, third year guy. I'm Jake Whitaker, third year guy in there. I'd say uh, we at least have five. I'd say we at least have five guys right there that have 20 pounds. I agree with you. I do agree with that. And what's what's interesting, you mentioned Monty and Whitaker are roommates. So I don't know if, oh, they, okay. I if didn't they're know doing the same gig and they, you know, whatever. But they, yeah. One more hummingbird lay of the lake for you just to show you how the Why full field we? of 86 anglers is spread out around the 45,000 acres. And I think we're going to be able to get a really good look at Lake Bufala tomorrow with our leaders. A lot of them fishing shallow, a lot of them fishing deep. And what's been interesting, Seeing a lot of movement with some of our deeper anglers here in the last hour. Keith Combs making a, a big run, really, the last 45 minutes as we kind of head up past the town of Eufaula, Alabama, right towards the state park. Really, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that what Ronnie just said right there, um, you're going to have to at least be at that 18-pound mark or better to hang in the mix going into you know, our second mm. day of competition. I mean, the guys, this statement was made before the tournament from a lot of the locals. Almost the entire field is going to have 14 pounds or better, which tells you you're in, you're in pretty good yeah. shape on this lake. Well, how about this? 50 seconds ago, five pounder Bill Lowe and 21 and a half pounds. No. Down. There you yes. go. Your prediction coming true right before your eyes there, Ron. <laughs> this looks good for a swim bait. Just a windblown rock and dock point. It is amazing how this lake turned on an hour ago. Yeah, and it, I mean, 
Shallow and deep. Yes. Both ways. Yeah. They said once yeah. they get moving some water after one o'clock, it'll go. We'll have to ring up Davey early tomorrow and tell him what the or ask him what the water level is. That's gonna uh -oh. be kind of a factor as far as the shallow water fishing. Well, we guys, we talked about it earlier, Brandon Lester, when we were talking about the guys who've, who've kind of maximized their offshore spots, caught a bunch of numbers, and Lester's one of those guys. He's got a solid bag sitting there at 17 and three quarters, uh, but he's caught a lot of fish, 43 today, 85 pounds of bass, and a lot of those have been from brush piles. And one of the things that we have seen, Brandon Lester, no doubt, he can handle a spinning rod uh, as well oh, as yeah. anybody on the Elite Series. And he just seems, looking at this Mer Mercury move of the day, that he was just in that numbers game to get up to that 18-pound region. Yeah, whether he started at the top right there and worked his way down lake or he ran all the way down lake and started working his way back, either way, his rotation was uh, a good decision today and a couple of his brush piles yielded eight to 10 did, fish per brush pile. Did I hear you say earlier in Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, was he in bucket B? Bucket B. That makes no sense. Well, he it makes sense because he was from 15th to 30th at the St. Johns River. Uh, is that how that worked? Yeah. That's all new to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Despite the, the great classic all, and everything like well, that? I think, yeah, I think that the classic's involved in that too, so he might have yeah. been just outside the 30th. Oh, no, no, yeah, he was, he was around the cut line. He was 40th, but having a top five at the classic helps. I take Good. back any shot of you cheating ever in fantasy fishing, <laughs> No, I did. <laughs> I did. Oh, same no, hey, same I did. back after I, that. I did. Same well, thing. I totally did. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Lester finished strong at St. Clair last year as well, doing something completely different from everyone else. With up the in the spinning rod. Yes. Up in the river. He, he, he can get away from people. He can catch him in a crowd. He can catch him by himself. He's a, he's, a, he's a great angler. You're right. He's due to win one this year. I would think so. I would yeah. think so. I, he seems like one of those guys that, that could, uh, honestly, like Jamie Hartman did last year, he could win one or two. For sure. Is how I feel about that. What's he the outlook for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, boy, if, if you're just tuning in or you're just tuning in the last few hours, um, really this morning, it's it's rare that when when we get to talk to anglers that they, that they're, they're, they shoot us straight. Um, but I think every <laughs> angler, really, yeah, yeah. I, I, a lot of them hold back, and it, it's yeah. how it is. And the reason that we're on camera, they're cautious. Is everybody's kind of running running right now or or headed back towards mm -hmm. weigh-in is. Every one of our anglers that we talked to yesterday said there is a two hour window, the start of the day, and there is a two hour window at the end of the day. And that is exactly what we got to see transpire. And, and granted, we had a you know a little bit of a lull there for, for three or four hours, but I really think, and, and I'm, I'm being redundant saying this, I think one of the really cool things that we're gonna look at tomorrow is can the shallow guys keep up with the deep guys or vice versa? Mm -hmm. You know, That's a big question I'm mark. curious to see if guys like Jake Whitaker, if guys like Bill Lowen, um, if their stretches that they caught him on reload. I guarantee you Denny Brower is somewhere right now watching this saying they absolutely can and will, like Davey Height said, if that water stays up and they don't pull the plug. We're going to do it uh, just like we did today, tomorrow morning, 11 Eastern time. We're coming to you with three hours it's of Bass Master Live. Tommy. It is good to be back. It's, I love you. It's, it's a great, same you. here, same here. I, I love it's a, the you deepest love personal empathy I, I have for love you. you. Hey, <laughs> three, three big <laughs> alerts at the end of the day. You were talking about how the first two hours were important, the last two hours are important. Bill Lowen's big one, give him 21 and a half pounds. Chris Zaldane's moved him from 20th to 5th. Keith Combs just caught a four and a half as well, and now he's in sixth. So those three guys are important catches. The final ain't over two yet. Hours. That not Chris Zeldin catches. I'm still That's not fantastic. sure what I saw. No, I'm not. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> the craziest the whole thing, thing. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. There's been a little bit of that here in the last hour. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole day has had a certain element of that, but yeah. that was really. But we're yeah, yeah, we're yeah. getting back on track. We are. Thanks a lot. Z, I loved your. Uh, 
bass. Well, we need a big profile. bite about now. Your hobby, folding laundry, is still yeah. up there. <laughs> well, it is. What? I found that. It is. It's one, I'm very good at it. Are you? Yes. Can you Come do a, fit, a fitted bed sheet? Can the you do a fitted bed sheet? The only thing I'm better at is wrapping presents. I thought yes. it was installing license plates. I, <laughs> one I am equally Wrapping as, presents. That's a I'm done. skill. I'm finished. Well, now. Don't be in No, heart. not yet. I'm yeah, going to welcome back close. here. Come on now. We can be. I think that is the one of the first times that we have seen Matt Heron deep cranking on the Bassmasters ever. Is that fair? Totally fair. Followed up by a spinning rod back right. to back. Right. That's been a weird year. There's the understatement of the century, I, right? Thank you. <laughs> on all yes, levels. Yeah. Thank you, though. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, to crack the top 13, you have to have 18 even. Uh, there's gonna, I'm gonna right tell now. you, there are gonna be some guys that come to this weigh-in with 15 pounds thinking, well, I think I held serve, mm -hmm. that are gonna go, whoa. 59th isn't too fun. Right, <laughs> right. No. Which right now, 15 pounds is the cut line, but yeah, that's for sure. There's a bunch of 14s that could be higher and whatnot. Boy, I need a big bite, something terrible. There he is. Yeah, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Number two. Yeah. Yes, and that was fun this morning to it get was. things started with some big fish on a, on a great place. It's just a legendary location, Lake Eufaula. Again, tomorrow we're going to have it for you starting at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. And tomorrow, as today, we've got the weigh-in coming up at 3 o'clock. Anglers are checking in right now. It's going to be a tell a lot. You see those official weights. morning, weights. too. It really was. Yeah, yeah. It was a little. Watching the guys at yeah. the takeoff. So I, seriously, I came in. I got I got choked up listening to it this morning. Good to be back, man. It was a good, good day. Good day for all of us who love fishing. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Bassmaster. Live, Tommy. Live. 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 Mm.